Alright, so let's get the play button up and running. So I already went over scene, so we're going to go pretty fast on this one. So we're going to call the start method, create the play scene in our constants. Create the file called play scene. Create the play scene class, pass it in the key from our constants. And then add it to our game config in the main file. And if you're missing anything or you got lost, don't worry, it's all on the hub. No, not that hub, the other hub, GitHub. Moving on, we're going to load and create animations with sprites that aren't packed into an atlas, like the one with the cat, sprites that are packed into an atlas, but with the entire sprite sheet as one frame, which is the character atlas, and sprite frames all cut up and packed into an atlas, which is the day's atlas. Okay, so let's get to it. Inside the load scene in the preload function, we're going to load them all in first. So, to load a sprite sheet, if you don't remember, it's the key, the path to the image, and then a configuration object for the frame width and height. For the atlas, it's the key, the path to the image file, and then the path to the JSON file. Alright, so moving on to the play scene, we're going to add a sprite from an atlas. So this time we're going to add a sprite, but we're going to use the frame parameter. And if nothing shows up, most likely you've added a transparent frame. So we're just going to select frame 15 and we should see what we want. Alright, so on to creating animations. The first key is the name to the animation. The frame rate we're going to set it to 10 and for frames this time we're going to use generate frame names passing in the atlas key and a configuration that will scan through all the file names in our days.json and the start and end option which is based off the file names and then we're just going to play that animation by calling dot play with the animation name and voila and we're going to make it repeat forever by passing negative one You can also manually choose the frames by specifying the frames property and then an array of numbers. Alright, so moving on to creating sprites and animation, where the entire sprite sheet is one frame of the atlas, we need to use textures add sprite sheet from atlas. Passing whatever key we want and a configuration object that takes the frame width and height and the atlas key and the frame names in the atlas. And you might be wondering what a texture is. So a texture is an image file optimized for better processing and it's created automatically when you load an image into Phaser. And we can see this by logging out the textures list. Anyways, we're just going to create the walking right animation of the hooded guy. We're going to create his sprite and make it two times bigger and then play the right animation. Also, creating Mandy sprite to show why we need to use add sprite sheet from Atlas because it will display the entire sprite sheet. Alright, so let's make our sprite global so we can use it in the console by putting it as a property on the window object. If you're using TypeScript, you can ignore the red line. So running set texture, passing in the texture key will change the sprite sheet our sprite uses. Set frame is self-explanatory. In this case, I know frame 26 is facing down. But what happens when we try to play the walking right animation? Yeah, you would think that it would play Mandy's walking right animation, but it doesn't, even though they share the same number pattern for walking right. 
and we'll address this with custom classes next time. But the answer is that you would need to create an animation with a different name, like Mandy moving right or something, and pointing it to the correct texture. But I'm not going to do that because we're going to automate the process in the next refactoring. All right, so lastly, we're going to create Anna's sprite and her walking left animation. And then we're just going to export the rest of the sprites to global so we can use it in the console. And as you can see, her left animation is a little bit screwed up. And that's because the person who made the sprite had the genius idea of making her left animation go from right to left. So we can either manually enter the frames backwards, or we can use the dot anims dot play reverse, which will play the animation backwards. You can also set flip x to true, which will mirror the sprite and flip it. And lastly, animation events that you can listen to. So on the pimple, we're going to listen to animation update, which will be called every time the animation changes a frame. And we're just going to log ah. And for animation repeat, which is self-explanatory, we're just going to log level up. All right, so that's all for this one. Hopefully I've covered most of the use cases, but there's much more lurking in the docs and examples. And I am out of here.